All right, so today we're gonna make some chicken and dumplings, uh, camp style, not traditional. So we're gonna use a lot of, some pre-mixed efforts. Um, so I have some Swanson white chicken breast. I have some chicken bouillon, and I have a half a stick of butter, and I have some red lobster cheddar bay biscuit mix, but I'm not adding the cheese to it because I'm gonna use that as my dumpling mix. And what we're doing is we're just boiling our water, and I'm going to put three bouillon cubes in the water because I'm not carrying chicken stock with me and I'm not boiling chicken fat or frying the chicken fat um, beforehand. So I want to make sure I get a good bouillon base so we can get it going here. I'm going to put the bouillon cubes in while my water is getting ready to boil, which it's almost it's only been on for about three minutes. It's almost starting to boil already. And then what I'm going to do is add my chicken to it. And while that's cooking up for a little bit, just for a few minutes, uh, I'm going to be mixing up my dumpling mix, the dough. Sorry about the black smoke. I get some, apparently a little bit of dirty wood in there. Keep the lid on there, that'll help it boil faster. Put that in my pocket. Right. And I'm going to put the butter goes right into the water. It may sound weird to do that, but the way I've been doing it for years, so it just gets a nice fatty kind of fatty broth. Anyway, when you're adding your dumplings, it thickens up pretty good. Get those things done. There. Got my trusty Swiss Army knife here. Trusty. Ah. I've had it. Not as long as my other one. Alright, don't spill anything. Funny enough, I use this in the kitchen. I don't, I don't use a regular can opener. Uh, my wife always gets on me like, why you always use your pocket knife for that? I, I just gotten used to doing it. Cans nowadays are so thin on the side, the can opener is bending. It doesn't seem to open all the way. I probably just need a better can opener, huh? Now there's going to be a lot of salt in this water from this ch chicken. And pretty much a lot of juice that I don't want so I'm just going to dump the water of this can out. Now if you were really needing the calories and stuff or the nutrients I'd, I'd say go ahead and add it to your your base here. Ooh, I missed the spot. There we go. Alright. Clean and simple. huh? Nope, I did miss the spot. Actually, that looks pretty good. I'm going to add the whole thing in. I'm just going to that right there. Now, you could shred that chicken up a little bit, or you could use fresh chicken. If you're going to use fresh chicken, make sure it has some fat on it. And then you'll remove the chicken from... When you do it with fresh chicken, you'd remove the chicken from the pot before you put your dumplings in and shred up the chicken. I don't have to do that. Now, if you're out there and you're you're needing to conserve on supplies and stuff, save this tin. You don't know what you can use it for. Uh, maybe you can make a little stove from it. Maybe you can make char cloth in it. All right? It'll probably warp in the fire, but
Right. Now this has a uh, this red lobster mix already has baking powder in it and everything. And then it's got this garlic butter, herb butter sauce. And what I do with the when I'm doing the chicken and dumplings, I just uh, add it to the water. I think it gives a flavor. Start around in there. Now, it's not critical that you have this at a, a rolling boil unless, unless you're, you know, disinfecting your water. What I'm doing is making chicken and dumplings and with pre-filtered water. I don't have to worry about all that. might not necessarily use all of this, right? I'm just gonna pour enough in there. This isn't a giant pot or anything. I'm gonna put about, oh, about half of that in there. And I'm gonna save the rest for another time. Because even, even if I don't have any chicken, I still have bouillon. I still have the broth. You can always mix up more and add it to it after I remove the dumplings from the pot. It's just going to keep getting thicker and then add a little bit of water to it. Break that up a little bit. I'm going to add just enough water to thicken it up. And if it's too thin, I'll, I'll add more flour mix to it. Not a big deal. I like to add just a little bit of water, well, get it a thin mix like this. That way I can get all the lumps out of it. And then add more, a little more uh, flour to the mix. Not much. Just so it's thick and sticky so it comes out in clumps. hungry as I am today, I might end up making the whole thing, who knows. And you do the same thing with like, ooh, storm coming in. Same thing with instant biscuit, biscuit, any kind of instant biscuit mix. As long as it's got uh, baking powder in it, because you want them to kind of thicken up. You know, you want the uh, dumplings to kind of have a uh, Almost like biscuit layers to them. I'm just doing drop dumplings. That's actually good enough. See, it's just a kind of a thick biscuit consistency, basically. Thicker than pancake batter. It's not a exact science, really. It's just is what it is. Once that water starts boiling, I can just start dropping those in. do is, after I get the butter off my spoon, when I'm putting the dumplings in, what I want to do first is get the spoon wet and hot from the, the broth, right? That way when I scoop a dumpling, the dumpling doesn't stick and I can just lay it down in there and it drops in. Basically, once you cook this up in this style, like basically once it's getting ready to boil, what you want to do is start dropping your dumplings in a spoonful at a time. And then you want to cook them for about 20 minutes, give or take, 22 minutes. Um, and keep, every once in a while reach in there and gently flip them over, just gently. Because if you do it too hard, they're just going to break apart. You just gently flip them over, just make sure they're getting cooked all the way through. We're almost there with the, uh, the broth. I'll come back to you when I'm putting the dumplings in. Now I'll tell you this, first time using this stove, 
I've used some like it in the past. Um, it's heavy duty. Um, I don't see I don't see any warping going on. I had a pretty hot fire going there for a while. It's building back up again. I added some sticks to it. Um, this metal ring does get hot. So I have a leather glove. I always bring it with me, a leather glove when I'm cooking anyway. I got a leather glove. Um, and I have extra fire material at the ready just in case I have some damp branches or anything. This pouch was made for me by uh, Jay Hercules at uh, Opossum Pouch Soft Goods. I like to have them make up, made of the same canvas that my bags are made of. He makes my bags too. Uh, my hunter, my Jaeger hunter and trail pack system. Um, so look up Jay Hercules on Facebook or um, go to opossumpouchsoftgoods.com I think it is. Um, if not, find them on Facebook and uh, see if he can make you up some little possibles pouches and stuff. I love keeping my stuff consolidated like that. He made me quite a few of those. Really nice. Um, and if you have something in there you want to keep dry, you can always wax coat them, oil coat them, whatever. Let's see how we're doing here. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Yeah, that's what I want. Let's see if I can show you. I'm boiling. <laughs> That took nine minutes. All right, let me see if I make sure you have you in the shot. So I'm gonna let the fire die, basically. And then what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take the spoon, dip it in the broth, drop it down. Do the same thing, dip the spoon in the broth each time. That wind's really going today. quite a few dumps in here. This is the large uh, Pathfinder stainless steel bush pot that I'm cooking in. This is just a cheap mixing bowl. Stainless steel, I, I use stainless steel so I can, if I need to, I can cook in it. If I need that extra pot, you never know. I'm gonna get all that goodness. Some of that I, I just drop in little, little bits so it can thicken up the broth. But it'll, trust me, it'll thicken it up all by itself. I have to do that. No waste. Put that down in there. See that hot broth just pulls it right off the spoon. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. But it's quick and simple. You can make this in the kitchen too. I've made this plenty of times for lunch for me and my son. My daughter and wife don't like chicken and dumplings. I know, communists, right? No. <laughs> so um, we're looking at about 20, 22 minutes. In between that, I'm going to just give it a little stir. I'm gonna let the fire die down because I don't want it to continuously roll and boil. Um, now I can leave the lid off, which is probably a good idea because it'll end up boiling over if I don't. Um, so I'm gonna leave the lid off and just let it do its thing for a little while. And clean up my dishes while I'm waiting. All right, so here's something interesting. I didn't expect this, but these handles aren't hot. The handles to lift the stove aren't hot. Now I would still probably use leather gloves just for safety purposes, but uh, the chicken and dumplings have been cooking for about 15 minutes after the boil, um, obviously. They're done. Um, I'm just gonna set this stove aside, just like that. Make sure you're setting it in a safe place. A little ash blew out of there. I'm going to get my... Mmm, I'm hungry. Now, you can cook this with salt and pepper. Um, I don't cook with salt because I don't know what everybody likes, so I just add my salt afterwards. So I use uh, the McCormick's Black Peppercorn Grinder and the McCormick's Himalayan Pink Salt Grinder. My scooper here. Give me some good dumplings. Oh yeah, it's looking good. Now, if I was making this for a bigger camp, like a bigger group of people, I'd use a much bigger pot and make a healthy, healthy, uh, healthy serving of this. Right now, it's just for me. There we go. 
some. <laughs> um, other, another thing you can do if you want to make a separate meal um, while this is still hot, while you still have your stove going, just cut up some carrots, onions, celery, some vegetables. Uh, you still got chicken in the bottom of the pot, which I got to get some of that out of there for myself. And uh, make yourself a, a nice stew or add some rabbit to it. There we go. Big healthy pieces of chicken in there for a growing boy. All right. Get my lid back on there so I don't get any funny stuff in it. This is the uh, 120 ounce Pathfinder stainless steel bush pot. And this is one of their cups. I usually use it for drinking water. Call me old fashioned, I like to have a cup instead of drinking out of a bottle all the time. A little bit of salt. I like a healthy serving of pepper. And I'm just using an old uh, 1980s Boy Scout mess kit bowl. Get that bark off my spoon. There you go. That's an easy enough meal for anybody to do. And it's a great one to practice. Like I'm sitting in my backyard right now. It's a great one to practice at home. Um, whether it's over the stove, over the grill, or like I just did. So the Red Camp large folding stainless steel stove, Pathfinder 120 ounce bush pot, Pathfinder cup, Boy Scout plate, a spoon, Something to scoop everything out with, some Swanson canned chicken, uh, red lobster biscuit mix, and some bouillon cubes, water and butter. You're good to go. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. Take care.